so today is a great example why Trump attacks the media the way he does. In, in a couple of different ways. Today's a great example why he fights back. Because there are instances today where you, you can't blame the guy. Really. Because there's almost a witch hunt against him and his administration. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason in a world that is beyond reason. And there's another instance here. And to, oh, by the way, Tom Benton is producing today. How are you, Tom? I am doing fine. And uh, I'm just kind of wondering what's going to happen tomorrow to draw attention away from the Sessions situation. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Trump's usually pretty good at that. Master of distraction. But, I mean, I'm also looking. I just looked this up just now, Tom Benson. Uh, President Trump, as you know, was on the USS Gerald Ford today. Right, right. You know, he talked to the sailors there to promote this new ship and talk to the sailors. Okay. Look at these headlines. I just looked this up just now on Google. CBS News. USS Gerald R. Ford boasts the latest technology, but not everyone sold on it. That's the headline from CBS News. CNN. Trump visits aircraft carrier to push military agenda, but pitfalls loom. <laughs> I mean, what? They, they can't help themselves. NBC. President Trump goes top gun in Navy jacket and cap. These are the top headlines on Google. Because he wore a Navy jacket and cap, he goes top gun. What? For all presidents wear usually have a sure. commander-in-chief jacket on when they're in presence like that. And Obama did the same thing. Exactly. Nobody said anything. Yeah. Ugh. And then ABC News, the USS Gerald Ford by the numbers. And, of course, Fox News actually just puts a headline and says, Trump to push Pentagon upgrade aboard U.S. aircraft carrier. They were the only one with a, without a biased headline. Seems factual, sure. Uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> I just unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable to me. I really just looked that up. Just just like just now. Well, you know, the other the, the other uh, headline that was given by Dana Perino on, we fi- uh, on the five last week was, Friday follows Thursday. Trump blame, <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> I know, and it's it's kind of funny because what's happening is um, the left in the media, in the leftist media, and the left in Congress and the left in general are going crazy. They're losing their credibility. But this is what I want to start out with today because it's not going to work. Another good one example, by the way. One more here. Remember last week I gave you the, uh, the, the headline of uh, Trump could cure cancer yeah. and, and still be blamed for it? <laughs> yeah. Well, the headline would be, Cancer cure find a uh, found. Trump puts thousands of researchers out of business. <laughs> you know, that's... Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I'm going to write that down. By the way, um, we are going to get into the Sessions thing as well, the Jeff Sessions thing, the whole witch hunt, which Trump's going to fight back against that. And I don't blame him because, once again, they there's nothing really there. They're so desperate to find something, and they're trying to create a narrative. But in terms of the left, they're attacking Trump based on scandals. They say he deserves to be impeachment. They're attacking him based on his unhinged and crazy. And the reason why it's not going to work has a lot to do with his speech in front of a joint session of Congress. I haven't had a chance to do this show since the speech. So here's my take on it. It creates a real problem for the Democrats because the Democrats and the left have to portray Trump. They're they're dug in on this. They're sold on this. This is their strategy. They have to portray Trump as unpresidential, as unhinged, as out of touch, as crazy, all of these things. And Trump proved in that speech, and a lot of people watched that, watched that speech, probably more than, uh, how much was it exactly? 48 million. 48 million. Obama's first speech when he came into office was 53 million. Yeah, so, but I mean, those kind of speeches are what a lot of people watch more than other stuff. Okay. And Trump proved that he can be presidential. He proved to the American people, and a lot of people approved of the speech, even people who don't like Trump said it was a good speech. He proved that he can look like a president. New York Times headline was one of the headlines they had was. Trump sounds like politician in speech. <laughs> what? Yeah. 
I don't even. I don't, I don't even want to start with them. But to, it was a good speech. It had a lot of great moments, and he proved to the world he can be presidential. This is the week. You know, even for me, it's been kind of hard to get in my mind to grasp the idea that Donald Trump is our president. This is the week that it changed in people's minds. This is the week where Donald Trump became president to the majority of the American people. The first instance was that speech. And I have some problems with the speech, and I'll get into that. But for the most part, it was a good speech. The second instance is today. If you saw Trump today on the USS Gerald Ford, and you listened to his speech, and you saw him there supporting the military, he looked like the president of the United States. So the narrative now, because the Democrats are pushing this idea continually that he he's illegitimate president, he's not presidential, he can't be president, he should be impeached. But when the American people see him this week, it's changed in their minds. It really has. And it's not going to work. I mean, there are those who just hate Trump and are going to hate him no matter what. But for the everyday American, they're going to say, well, this guy, I might not have liked him, but he looked like a president. Now, here's part of the speech today from Donald Trump on the USS Gerald Ford that gives you an example of him sounding, looking very presidential. Here it is. Cut, play, cut one of Trump. And America's military will ensure that even though the darkest nights and throughout, a bright and glowing sun will always shine on our nation and on our people. Our Navy is great. Our Navy is great. Our people are great. Our Republic will meet any challenge, defeat any danger, face any threat, and always seek true and lasting peace. May God bless our military. May God bless our Navy. May God bless the wonderful Gerald Ford family. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. When you listen to that, you hear the president of the United States. Whether you like Trump or not, whether you like all his policies or not, whether you voted for him or not, you listen to that speech and that part of the speech and you see him up there in front of the military, you see him in the military jacket and you see him. You can see in his face, for one, that he really does support the military. You can just see it. And he loves the, and you, he really does love this country. But when you listen to that, he became president of the United States this week, whether you like him or not. And that creates a very big problem for the Democrats because they're focused on scandal. And this whole thing, Jeff Sessions today, and we're going to get into this in a little bit, but Jeff Sessions today is being attacked by the Democrats because they say he perjured themselves because he's, they apparently said he did not meet with any Russians and then he met with the Russian ambassador. They're trying to create a narrative that Trump um, is only, you know, Trump stole the election with the help of the Russians, which is even, there's no evidence of that. There's evidence of Russian hacking, but there's no evidence that the Russian hacking really had a, an effect on the election for one, but they're trying to create another scandal. And actually what they should learn, they should learn from the mistakes of the Republican party in this regard, for instance, actually, because the Republican party tried to hit Obama with scandals and deservedly. So I think there were legitimate scandals. You look at fast and furious, you look at Benghazi and other things. The Republican kept hitting them. The Republicans kept hitting them on that stuff, but it wasn't successful. It really didn't matter to the majority of the electorate. What mattered to the majority of the electorate, what got people to vote Republican in the House and Senate was not the scandals. It was the economy. It was Obamacare. It was the rise of ISIS and not feeling safe. Those were the things that hurt Obama. It was his actual policies. So if the Democrats are smart, they could maybe focus on some of the policy shortfalls of Trump, and they might actually be more effective. But they're not doing that. 
They're tre- trying to create a narrative. Now, in terms of what I liked about the speech, about Trump's speech, his joint session of Congress, I liked, obviously, the, the moment of the night was when he um, honored the fallen Navy SEAL. And the wife of the Navy SEAL was there. Um, I don't I don't have any audio of that. I'm sure everyone's heard it. I don't have any audio of the speech. You've all heard it. It's been everywhere. I don't want to replay it for you. But that was a good part. It's good to have want strong borders. He talked about that. He called the enemy radical Islam. That's great. At the beginning of the speech, he denounced hate. He denounced anti-Semitism. He promoted civil rights. I thought that was great. The things I did not like about the speech, the infrastructure plan, I obviously, I've talked about that many times. I don't like it. It's a big spending, big government boondoggle. Obamacare, I'm mixed on. Because he did talk about we need to repeal and replace Obamacare, and that's a good thing. We need his leadership to do that. But it seems like the Republicans and Trump are caving on some of the things. My prediction is this, based on what Trump said. The good things that will come out of the Obamacare replacement will be they'll get they'll allow insurance companies to compete across state lines. They will allow um, insurance, you know, they will get rid of the 30-hour work week. They will get rid of the individual mandate. But the negatives, I think, and this is where the Republicans are going to cave, and this is really bad. They're going to change um, the subsidies and make them tax credits, which are just a subsidy in another name. They're going to keep a lot of the taxes, I think. It's starting to look like they're going to keep some of the taxes of it, which is a problem. And they're going to keep a lot of the mandates that require insurance companies to cover all this different stuff, including pre-existing conditions and all that, but other stuff as well. And that's a problem. So I'm mixed on that part of the speech because I'm glad he's calling for repeal, but I'm worried that he's caving a little bit on it. The biggest problem, though, and really overall, I like the speech. I like the idea. He promotes the flag. He promotes the military. He talks about supporting our police. All these things are good. But I think he does it from a point of view, not of conservatism, not on a belief in limited government, not on a belief in the Constitution, but I think he does it on a belief in nationalism. I never hear him, and I've talked about this before, I never hear him talk about the true role of government. I never hear him talk about how the government is too big, it needs to be cut, it needs to be the Constitution of the United States needs to be restored. I don't hear those fundamental conservative principles coming from Donald Trump. And I wrote a piece today, and you can get it on the Beyond Reason blog. Just go to 1025wfla.com, click on the Good Morning Orlando tab, and then click on Beyond Reason blog. And um, I wrote a piece today in which I titled, Don't Be Fooled, Conservatism is in Trouble. And I actually believe, despite the fact that we have both houses of Congress and the presidency, I do believe conservatism in a lot of ways is in trouble. And I explained it in pretty good detail on my blog why I believe that. And we'll get to that. I want to get to that in the next segment. I want to get more into detail on that and see if you agree. I bet they, you know, if a lot of people read that blog. I'm probably going to have a lot of people mad at me for, for saying it, especially a lot of Trump supporters. You, you, maybe you're one of them. You can call 407-916-5400. You can text to 23680. We have so much more to get to. We're also going to get to things that made Yaffe laughy. Oh, I have some really funny stuff today we'll end the show with. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. You know what's beyond reason? Yaffe is now on YouTube. Go to YouTube now and just search Beyond Reason Radio. The voice of reason in a world that is beyond reason is back now. Yes, welcome back to the show, everyone. This is another edition of Your Voice of Reason of Orlando Smart Talk Radio. If you missed any of the show, any of any of the shows, <laughs> you can catch uh, the Beyond Reason podcast. Pretty much anywhere podcasts are available. The best way to get it, download the Beyond Reason Radio app, or you can just go to beyondreasonradio.com and listen to the podcast there. So I ended the last segment, um, maybe a little controversial, because I wrote a blog piece today, which I put on Facebook also. So if you send me a friend request on Facebook, uh, search Michael Yaffe, send me a friend request, I will accept it. It's up on there. You can find it on the Beyond Reason Radio Facebook page. I also put it on the WFLA 
Facebook page. Just like us at WFLA Orlando. And I talked about and I titled it, Don't Be Fooled, Conservatism is in Trouble. And a lot of people, I'm sure, would read that and think I'm crazy. Because, what do you mean? Republicans own both houses of Congress and the presidency. Conservatism should be on the rise. Conservatism should be shining. They own most of the governorships, most of the state legislatures, Republicans. And when you first think about that, it seems really good. The problem is we own this stuff, especially in Washington, yet we're not acting like conservatives. And we're not talking about conservatism anymore. So when when we get to a point where our own side is corrupted, where the conservative movement, the conservative ideas of the Constitution, of limited government, of free markets, individual liberty, freedom of religion, when we go away from those ideas and they're not talked about and they're not discussed and they're not put into action, We have a real problem because we have no excuses now. We're in power now. So if Donald Trump doesn't do real conservative things, and he's done some conservative things, he's added, you know, some good some good cabinet members with conservatism. The only two areas I really see conservatism winning right now is abortion and school choice. But I look at things like Obamacare. And you have Republicans in Congress right now basically admitting that parts of most, a lot of Obamacare is here to stay. You have Republicans in Congress pretty much admitting that health, that the government, the federal government, has a major role to play in health care in this country. How are we ever going to cut the size of government if the government is completely entrenched in our health care system? It's going to be next to impossible. You look at the national debt. The national debt's $20 trillion. We're not even trying to balance the budget. We're not even trying to get rid of the deficits, not let's start paying down the debt. And getting rid of the deficits are very easy. All you have to do is cut the increase in spending for five years and the balance will budget itself. Or the budget will balance itself, sorry. And um, so in five years, it would balance itself. But every time something like that is proposed, it is Republicans as well as Democrats, but also Republicans who talk against it, who say it's too extreme. Because too many Republicans who call themselves conservatives believe that the government should be spending all this money. Now we're trying to get rid of the sequester, the one thing that was successful in getting down the budget. And so when we have stuff like that, and then we have a president of the United States who really talks mostly, yes, he loves the flag, Yes, he loves the military. Yes, he loves law enforcement. These are all good things. But we don't no longer talk about the why. Basically, he believes government, big government can be good. It just needs to be redirected in different things. And the biggest example of this is when he talks about, well, we shouldn't be spending on money on foreign wars. That money could be better spent on infrastructure in the United States, for instance. So we're taking... So he's not against spending the money. He just wants to spend it in a different place. But government is still too big, no matter which one of those you do. Instead of someone up there saying it's not the role of government to be doing these things, he's trying to create new big plans with government spending to, quote, make America great again. So when you talk about real conservatism, when you talk about limited, I don't hear this from Trump. I don't hear this from the Republican leadership in Congress. And and frankly, I don't hear it enough from a lot of conservative media pundits anymore. Most of the focus I hear now from conservative media pundits, from people like me behind a microphone, is not promoting the idea of individual liberty and small government and constitutionalism. It's merely just attacking the other side. We spend most of our time now attack, 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 attack. The biggest names now attack the other side. And I'm not against attacking the other side. I'm not against criticizing the other side. But I think sometimes we forget why we do it. We forget why we criticize the other side. We forget in criticizing the other side, 
we forget about promoting our own ideas. So it's just fight fire with fire, which I've talked about before on this show. And a lot of times we're hypocritical when we do that. We don't really care how it's done. We just care that the other side loses and that our quote unquote side wins. But is it winning if we win, but don't put in conservative principles in place? This is a big issue for me. And it's why I think when I hear Donald Trump give a pretty good speech to a joint session of Congress that most of the country loves, but really not mention the Constitution, really not mention the idea of cutting the size of government, really not mention the idea of going back to government's true role. He never talks about the role of government. He will be the personification of conservatism for possibly the next year, eight years, because he's president of the United States. So now people are going to think that's conservatism when really it's not. And that can create a lot of problems for our side. We have to get rid of the corruption on our side as well as criticize the other side. 407-916-5400, text to 23680. We're going to get into the whole Jeff Sessions thing. We're going to get into uh, Trump had a statement on it. We're going to get into that, what the Democrats are saying on it, what Jeff Sessions himself said on it, the Attorney General now being attacked by the Democrats for committing perjury and being in bed with the Russians. 407-916-5400, text to 23680. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. Subscribe to the Beyond Reason podcast today on your Stitcher app and hear the voice of reason anytime. Your voice of truth in a world of fake news. Beyond Reason Radio continues right now. Well, the Democrats already got Michael Flynn to resign, even though he didn't do anything illegal. They merely said he had to resign because he lied to the vice president or misled him or whatever but are not doing anything illegal but the democrats are obviously trying to create a narrative that trump is in bed the trump administration and trump is in bed with russia and that russia that means russia is in control of our foreign policy and that they pretty much helped trump get elected which makes trump a delegitimate president in their minds and they think it's gonna work and I just, I think it's foolish. I really, I really do because it's starting to seem like a witch hunt. Now, a lot of people are going, I have always been a little bit concerned about how much uh, Trump and his administration are willing to defend Russia. It always has kind of bothered me. I'm not going to lie, but these things keep coming out. And then when you actually look at the details of them, it's, there's nothing really there. And it seems like, okay, what, why is this really happening? Why is this keep happening? Now, there's two reasons why the Democrats keep bringing this up. One reason is there is something there and they're trying to get to the bottom of it. Or the other reason is they're trying to create a narrative to disqualify Trump. And as I said before, um, the Republicans tried this against Obama with Benghazi and other things, and it didn't work against him. What did work against him was criticizing his actual policies because they were damaging to the country. If the Democrats could go that route, it might be more effective, but Trump's policies won't be as damaging to the country. 407-916-5400, text 23680. This is another edition of Beyond Reason Radio. I am your host, Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason in a world that is beyond reason. So we're going to play. This all started because the Washington Post came out with a report that said that Jeff Sessions had met with the Russian ambassador during the campaign season. And they're saying that Jeff Sessions, the attorney general now, recently confirmed, lied under oath during the confirmation hearings when Al Franken asked him about having any connections to to Russia and having any communications to Russia. So the best thing we can do is go through the audio and actually play the exchange between Jeff Sessions and Al Franken and see if Jeff Sessions lied, misspoke, and what happened here. So let's hear the original exchange. Tom Benson, if you could play Sessions Cut One for me. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign 
communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? Senator Franken, I'm not aware of uh, <laughs> any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I didn't have not have communications with the Russians, um, and I'm unable to comment on it. So when you listen to the context of that, Rankin was bringing up a CNN report that the Trump campaign had communications with the Russians dealing with the Trump campaign. And Sessions was kind of taken aback. And he says, well, I didn't have any communications like that. Now, what what he is saying now is maybe he could have clarified a little bit, but go ahead and play a Sessions cut two for me, Tom Benson. He he put out, uh, this is what he said today in response to the criticism. Let me be clear. I never had meetings with Russian operatives or Russian intermediaries about the Trump campaign. And the idea that I was part of a, quote, continuing exchange of information during the campaign between Trump surrogates and intermediaries for the Russian government is totally false. In retrospect, if I should have slowed down and said, but I did meet one Russian official a couple of times, that would be the ambassador. And so what Jeff Sessions is saying now is that he did meet with a Russian official But it was in terms of he's in the Senate Armed Services Committee and they meet with ambassadors from time to time. And that's what they were meeting about Had nothing to do with being a part of of the campaign. Okay, but the Democrats don't think that's good enough. The Democrats are going to pounce on this. And actually, here's uh, Chuck Schumer and uh, Nancy Pelosi on this, basically saying he needs to resign. If you could play that cut for me. Uh, The Democrats cut for me. Because the Department of Justice should be above reproach for the good of the country, Attorney General Sessions should resign. The fact that the Attorney General, the top cop in our country, lied under oath to the American people is grounds for him to resign. So they're saying that he lied under oath, he committed perjury, and that he should have resigned. I will say this. The Democrats don't care about perjury. All of a sudden, they care about perjury. No, the, the line that pops into my mind is: if you like your doctor, you can keep him. If you like, well, yeah, your, you know that's not a lie. Well, yeah, and I was just looking up where, um, you know, Eric Holder lied about spying on, you know, some of the news outlets, and there's other instances. But the biggest one is Bill Clinton, <laughs> who perjured himself. None of these Democrats voted for him to be impeached when he perjured himself over the Monica Lewinsky thing. So, I mean, give me a break, but. Well, the main reason I'm saying this is they're using the perjury thing, but they don't care about the perjury thing. Trust me. What they care about is creating this narrative that Russia helped steal the election, which delegitimizes Trump, and that Trump and the campaign and his administration are now in complete bed with Russia. And the narrative is being created. So they want to go after Jeff Sessions. They already got Michael Flynn. They want him to get him resi- to resign. A lot of these people know Jeff Sessions personally. They like Jeff Sessions personally. They said so in the past. So there's not going to be. They're not going to criminally do anything to him criminally. Criminally, this is all to get after Trump and his administration. So if they get him to resign, it's just one more way of getting after Trump and to create this narrative. It's going to have a scandal. They think that's what's going to bring Trump down is some kind of scandal. The problem is every time they do this, it seems like there's nothing really there. Even with the Flynn thing, the intelligence operatives who listened to the phone calls admitted there was nothing illegal in the phone calls with Flynn and the Russians and no real wrongdoing. They even admitted that. So it's like, what is going on here, really? What is going on here, really? So... Ted Cruz actually had a comment on this, Tom Benson. If you can play the Ted Cruz cut, he was asked on Morning Joe about this this morning, and this was his response to this. Uh, you know, Joe, I'm, I'm not concerned about that. I, I think what we're seeing is, is a lot of political theater. Uh, could, could Jeff have been more clear in what he said? Yes. Uh, I, I, I think it, that was unfortunate, but, but I think context matters a lot. Uh, Jeff was being asked about 
the Trump campaign communicating with the Russians. I think he understood that he was answering it in that capacity, and, and, and that is perfectly understandable. And, and the reason I say it's pickle theater is the underlying meeting. You know, this, this morning everyone's in high dungeon about, uh, about this meeting. The underlying meeting is a nothing burger. It, it, it's what senators do every day meeting with foreign ambassadors. That's part of the job, and, and Jeff is a, was a very hard-working senator. He'll be a very hard-working attorney general. And so I think everyone's getting all worked up because it's a chance to beat up the attorney general and beat up the president. I think he's exactly right on that. That, that. That's really why they're getting worked up. It's a chance to beat up on the attorney general and the president. And he said it's a big nothing burger. Got to like that. Got to like that statement, nothing burger. If Ted Cruz were smart, he would come out with his own restaurant called Nothing Burger. What comes on a nothing burger? Is it just meat and nothing, I guess? Or is there even meat on a nothing burger? I don't know. What's a nothing burger? It's like the Seinfeld show. It's a show about nothing. You know? <laughs> exactly right. So we said there's nothing there. Um, you know, I just read another piece from the Washington Post that basically pointed out that it's true that um, these senators— meet with Russian ambassadors and stuff all the time that it happens. So there you go. And what's really funny about this is <laughs> what's really funny about this is there was one person who criticized Trump for this. Claire McCaskill. She tweeted out in this <laughs> trying to get a Je Trying to get a Jeff Sessions, trying to call him a liar, trying to say you would never meet with a Russian ambassador for the Armed Services Committee, yada, yada, yada. She tweeted out today and said this. I've been on the Armed Services Committee for 10 years. No call or meeting with Russian ambassador ever, what she said. Remembers that. She says, Democrat Claire McCaskill said, ever, never met with Russian ambassadors. Ambassadors call members of the Foreign Relations Committee. Okay, that's what she said in response to the Jeff Sessions thing today. Except the funny thing about Twitter is it keeps your tweets from the past as well. <laughs> so this is what Claire McCaskill, now she said today, she said, I've never met with Russian ambassadors ever, she said. But in 2013, January 30th, 2013, on Twitter, she put this. Off to meeting with Russian ambassador. Upset about the arbitrary, cruel decision to end all U.S. adoptions, even those in process. She admits in 2013, in a tweet there, it says she's off to a meeting with the Russian ambassador. And then in 2015, remember, in the tweet today, she said she's never met with them once. Ever, she said. 2013, she obviously did. In a tweet in 2015, today's today calls with British, Russian, and German ambassadors on the Iran deal. So she lied. And it's actually in this Washington Post piece points out by Amber Phillips that it is true that you can meet with Russian ambassadors. So. It's it's kind of funny. Now, Trump put out a statement um, this evening and said, Jeff Sessions is an honest man. He did not say anything wrong. He could have stated his response more accurately, but it was clearly not intentional. This whole narrative is a way of saving face for Democrats losing an election that everyone thought they were supposed to win. The Democrats are overplaying their hand. They lost the election and now they have lost their grip on reality. The real story is all of the illegal leaks of classified and other information. It is a total witch hunt. I have to say, I agree with Trump on so much of what he said, which doesn't happen all the time. So it must be something big. Um, I agree that it was probably a misstatement. He probably could have said it more accurately, but... When you're asked about the campaign and you're dealing with the campaign, he's like, I wasn't talking to Russia about the campaign. It's not even like he was talking to Russian operatives or anything or anyone in Russia. He was just talking to the Russian ambassador who's here. And then he says it's a narrative created by the Democrats. I completely agree with that. And he says the Democrats are overplaying their hand. I agree with that as well. 
So all this stuff is very interesting to me. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this is coming from someone who has always been a little uncomfortable with Trump's relationship with Russia and with his eagerness to defend Russia. But the Democrats, if they're going to come out with this stuff, they need to have real evidence that this not this illegal stuff is going on. But they have no real evidence on this. So now, even if there is some truth to this, it's just looking like a witch hunt. But this is why you have your voice of reason here, Michael Yaffe, to sort through it all. 407-916-5400, text to 23680. I'm going to end the show today with some things that made Yaffe laughy, and you're going to love it. This is Beyond Reason Radio. I'm your host, Michael Yaffe. We'll be right back. If you like Beyond Reason Radio, well, make sure to show it by liking the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Radio. The conscience in your ear telling you the difference between right and wrong. Yaffe is back on the air. All right, so our producer, Tom Benson, this is Michael Yaffe, the voice of reason here on Beyond Reason Radio. If you miss any of this show, make sure to catch the podcast of the show anywhere podcasts are available. So, uh, Tom Benson, you gave me some information that Donald Trump will actually be in town tomorrow in the Orlando area tomorrow. He'll be at St. Andrew Catholic School in Pine Hills. And um, so it says, let's see here, um, the faith-based school when he meets. So Marcus, someone there at the school is now 16, said he's hoping to convey how meaningful it was for him to attend a small faith-based school when he meets President Donald Trump during his visit to the school on Friday. Um, So that should be pretty interesting. I'm sure he's just on his way to his Mar-a-Lago resort. So there we go. We had a caller who was very upset that I didn't talk about it, and basically because I didn't know about it. I had no idea. Can you imagine the police presence tomorrow in Pine Hills? Oh, gee. (laughs) That's a very good point. It's a very good point. Okay, I thought I would end the show with a little fun here with things that made Yaffe laughy. I need to get, like, a good laugh track or something for this segment. I need, What I need to do is get the audio of, like, the Joker from The Dark Knight and make that the, the laugh track. For this. But I found a couple of things one, uh, that I found on social media and other places as well. They got a little chuckle out of me, so I thought I would share them with you. There's been a lot of criticism of Hollywood these days, and I found some jokes here. One is, here's the first cut. It's Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina who um, was at a press club uh, event, and he had a couple of jokes, one about Hollywood and one about Kellyanne Conway, the whole thing with that on her on the couch and everything. This is what he said. Washington and Hollywood are actually very different. One is the place that produces fantasy and fiction with jealousy over who gets the best roles, enormous egos, and a lot of backstabbing. And the other is where they make movies. (laughs) I like that. Thinking about fake news, has anyone seen the controversy around Kellyanne Conway and a couch in the Oval Office? Come on, people. You remember the 90s? That couch has had a whole lot worse (laughs) things. Come on now. Uh, oh, thank you, Tom Benson, our drummer Tom Benson. There, so, <laughs> I love that. And then here is an epic rant I found. It's going on Facebook. It's from years ago when Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld, was accepting a reward. But it thought it was timely because he has an epic rant here against actors and Hollywood. This is what he said. Sick of all these actors and, you know, I don't know why we're so fascinated with actors in this culture. They haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo mini brains. <laughs> Why? We must honor this man. Why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. (laughs) He's a genius, I tell you. It's genius what he's doing. Playing dress up and pretend is not genius, ladies and gentlemen. It's not genius. (laughs) Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready? Say what we told you to say. (laughs) Fantastic. He did it. Give this man a huge golden trophy. He's a goddamn genius. Walking down the red carpet in these ridiculous 
outfits like they're senators from Krypton. It's just so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I thought that was great. I thought that was really timely when he started taking on actors. And it's funny, too, because he's an actor. So, But <laughs> there was way too much truth in that. We put so much praise and emphasis on people who play pretend and dress up. And, you know, I, I don't have a problem with actors. I love movies. Anyone who knows me knows that. But it's kind of when they start getting into other things, politics and all this other stuff, it's like you're an actor. Why, why do you think we need to praise you for all this stuff? And, you know, there's another case of this. You know, I wish actors would just act and not get into all this other stuff because then I have to look at them differently and I just would rather like them for being a good actor. But there's another instance of this here. Patrick Stewart from Star Trek, The Next Generation, and the X-Men movies. I loved him in the X-Men movies. Uh, he said today on The View that he would apply for U.S. citizenship to fight and oppose the Donald Trump administration. Really? Really? Why? 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 Don't call. I want to like you, Patrick Stewart. Um, so there we go. He says, the first night we were in Washington, I had the worst night's sleep for years and years and years because of Donald Trump. And then he said, did not direct... So we insult your president. Whoopi Goldberg says, not mine. Not my president. Oh, Whoopi. You're just so clever. Another person I used to like, you know, in her movies that now I can't stand because she got, she had to open her mouth on politics and doesn't know what she's talking about. All right. I thank you all for listening to me. It's been a fast hour. If you missed any of the show, make sure to check the podcast. Just go to 1025WFLA.com. Click on the Beyond Reason blog i have a great blog piece up there and all the podcasts are there as well you just go to beyondreasonradio.com as well and check out the podcast anywhere podcasts are available i will be on to num- tomorrow night tomorrow night at 6 p.m prime time 6 p.m another edition of beyond reason radio and um well i'll catch you guys then